throughout the country, states and the federal government collect a lot of data on TANF recipients' outcomes, their participation in services, but this data is often used only for accounting purposes and reporting purposes. It's not really used to improve the program. So our central goal is to help TANF participants by making more efficient use of data and applying modern data science techniques to help states to make better insights from the data they already collect. Eight state agencies that administer the TANF program were selected to become part of this 30-month learning experience. The 30-month collaborative pilot was a full of activities that this team of staff would engage in with us and with our three organizational partners. Across the eight pilot teams, each of them chose a question that mattered to them, which meant we had a variety of questions. And they had different methods or different data in each state that they would then use to analyze, examine the information, and answer the questions that mattered to them. We have worked with data, tons and tons of data, millions of cases over many years. But generally, it was merging fields or extracting data, not so much about explaining things. Why is this number this way? And if there are changes, why are those changes happening? Typically, we would report on caseload. Caseload goes up, caseload goes down. We never try to explain why, why they're up and why they're down. My impression when I was talking with the caseworkers is that a lot of times they kind of depend on their gut feelings of what would work and a lot of time that's just assigning whatever employment is at hand, which might not be really long-term successful strategy. Predictive modeling, what it does is we are trying to predict the likelihood that these case leads or head of households are going to be successful after they leave the program. And then based on that predictions, we are trying to kind of categorize them into high risk of not achieving success, uh, medium risk and low risk. And then for each of these groups, we're going to look at which of these employment and education services that we're going to assign them would be most helpful for them to achieve success after they leave the program. So in that way, we could identify the sort of like a pathway to success and then what is the most efficient way to get to them. We do have a history of using the unemployment insurance records to understand employment outcomes, but this was a very focused effort to kind of integrate those two data sets in looking at a particular research question. We were comparing a group that did receive a supportive payment with, with a group that did not receive a supportive payment and comparing their employment outcomes within a year after leaving. And so we learned that the group that did receive a payment had an 11% higher likelihood of entering employment compared to the group that didn't receive a payment. We're always trying to investigate, you know, which tools within the case worker's toolbox um, are going to be effective at leading a client towards employment. And so it's very exciting to see those treatment effects. These kind of projects that allow you to create networks, you know, and, and new friendships and colleagues have, are always really fun and beneficial, I think. So for me, that was where a lot of the benefit was. I think for the staff, they enjoyed learning some new analytical techniques and also sharing experiences with colleagues in other states that are doing a lot of the same kind of work that they're doing. For example, when we were going to do the survey, we learned that Colorado also had a TANF exit survey and they shared that with us and we got some insights from them about what worked well and what didn't work well and those sorts of things. There's a lot of satisfaction in finding that you're not the only one that does this. You know, There are 50 other states that are all have the same challenges, have the same issues that they have to deal with and talking with them about how they deal with some of those challenges is really useful, I think. We work closely with our counties, but because our program is state supervised, but county and tribal administered, there's 87 counties, so therefore there's 87 different ways of administering the program. The rules are the same, but the counties have some flexibility in how they administer the program. So the opportunity to work with a county around data and program administration is always gonna be an opportunity that we will jump at. 
the capacity to work on data is not the same in all of those different counties. So having Dakota and Olmsted like, you know, stand up and say, we want to do this kind of data work. The TANF Data Collaborative provided this sort of place for um, folks who are newer to doing data analysis um, to really learn so many great skills quickly. Creating the space to collaborate with them on this project was so valuable because I got to learn so much about what that implementation piece is and also what questions are important to them. So we could all work together really closely on doing the analysis together. Um, I guess the other thing from a state, my perspective, is that we don't have statisticians too much working in state government. There isn't many people I can go to when I have a statistics or analysis question, but having the TDC, I could write to, to Rick at MDRC and say like, I'm thinking of doing this, what do you think? Or I'm encountering this problem. I could write to people at Chapin Hall and ask them for support. So having that like wider network of people, and I should also say like also in other states, like learning from other states about what they were doing was super valuable to our analysis and our understanding of how we fit into the wider kind of public assistance system. This 30 months was a wonderful foundation to give us those skills that we can use for moving forward. I think each of our agencies gained a lot that we could use independently, but our relationship really grew in those those 30 months. Um, we've become to really rely on each other's strengths. We are planning to continue this work together moving forward, maybe pulling in some more colleagues from other areas across the state, perhaps enhancing our data to beyond TANF to see how TANF and other programs might be interacting. So we have a lot of goals and ambitions related to that. It was super fun, very uh, interesting, like totally positive. I know we would all do it again. We thought so highly of the applied data analytics class that was provided by Coleridge, then we did one for California staff. And we plan on continuing on. We had so much help from folks that have statistics degrees and PhDs and are incredibly brilliant and work at academia, and they don't always know what's happening on the ground for program practitioners. And you need both of those folks. We need everybody in the room because somebody might not know the incredibly intricate policies of TANF time clocks and maximum aid levels and what qualifies you to be on the program and when and how and why. And you have somebody who maybe has never done any statistical work but has administered this program for 20 years. And that is a swath of knowledge that we really, really need to do anything useful with this data. It's so inspiring to talk to the other TDC members around the country that are efforting in the same way. You know, the world is is sometimes depressing, right? You kind of think, oh my God, you know, what's happening? But then you see all these other people everywhere in the country that we met through the TDC, all of us like striving to make the world a better place. And it's, it, it helps you get out of bed in the morning, man. It's, it's great. Our primary customer is our participant. It's the families that we work with. So whatever we can do to improve their experience and improve their outcomes, we want to do that.